as Velt is a framework that tries to do something different. It promises to help you write less code, offering a truly reactive experience with no virtual DOM. After trying it for a week, I feel like it's the framework I wish everybody was using. It's seen a dramatic rise in popularity within the last few years. Now, the reason it's so popular is that it feels familiar. Let's build a quick search component so you can see how it works. So let's go ahead and start with an installation. And this is going to be a little bit different than in most platforms. Instead of having a CLI, you start your project using a template in a utility called Digit. This would be an npx command, and then we will call this utility Digit, and then we specify the template that we want to use. And so here, what you would do is put in the name of the GitHub project. So here I will put Svelte.js and then the template that I want to use. So this template is, happens to be called template. And then I would give this thing a name that I want to call it locally. So here I would put something like demo Svelte or something. So what this is going to do is actually clone this repository with this new name that I'm giving it right here. So now let's go ahead and CD to this demo Svelte project and we'll issue an npm install command. All right, so that's gonna install everything. Let's go ahead and open this up. We've got a rollup config file. Uh, we've got kind of the regular files, you know, a readme, a package.json with some of the commands. So to get things started, you would want to issue an npm run def command. And that actually just runs a rollup command, as you can see right here. Let's go ahead and start that up. So we'll do npm run dev. And let's go ahead and open that up in a browser. And that's going to look something like this. If we take a look at what we got when we install this, in addition to some of these other files, you get a source folder. This is where most of your app lives. And then we have a scripts folder. This is really to enter any scripts that you want to use with the project. Mainly it's here to let you set up TypeScript if, that, if that's what you want to use. But I'm going to go ahead and delete that because I don't really need that for this project. And then we have a public folder. Now here you would put most of the files that you want to just publish with the project. It's going to modify things in this build folder. You can put additional files if you want to. And I'm going to add some images to that folder. So just put it in the public folder. And in this images folder, there is a cast.json file. So I'm just going to put that in the same level as the public folder. So we have basically an images folder as well as a cast.json. This is just a JSON file. And here you'll see that there is an index.html. So this is the main HTML file that I get when I use the project. It's calling the bundle. It's calling global CSS. We can, if we want to import something into this. So what I'm going to do is bring in a copy of one of my favorite quick projects called Pico CSS. And I'm going to go to get started here and just get the link to the CDN. So I'm just going to go with importing the style sheet right into here. When I do that, that should change this hello world. I'm not going to use this global CSS. I could just delete it from here and then take it away from here. So now that we have all that, let's take a look at what's in the source folder because this is where most of my application lives. This main.js file is your entry point. So this is where we import the application from the main project, Svelte, and then we create an application. This, this should be pretty familiar if you're used to something like React or Vue. Notice that we are targeting the entire document. And then we're actually passing a variable called name to our project. Where the real magic happens is in this app.svelte. We can see that there's actually three different things. You have a script section. This is where you put your JavaScript, a HTML section, and then a style section. Now, all these are optional. One of the things that I like is Svelte is designed to make your life easier. So if I just do these two tags right here, it doesn't really care. And something like React, you would have to use a, a div or some sort of like empty tag. However, it's probably a good idea to leave this container right here. We can also use a regular style attribute instead of a style object like you would have to do in JSX. And if I wanted to use a class here, I could do the same thing. Class equals title. And then we can just change this thing here to title. The styles are going to be scope. Any styles that you put in here will automatically belong only to this component. You can also see here how props and variables work. We can create a variable right here and output the value of that variable here. The value of the variable is being created by these props in the main.js file. So these will be global. We can go ahead and delete these. Once I do that, this will say undefined. If we wanted to, we could declare the value locally. 
However, let's go ahead and get rid of this code as well as the style section down here that we don't need. Let's try importing a couple of different subcomponents to this thing. So we're gonna create a component called cast list. I'll just do an import statement, cast list, and we'll import this from a file. And we're just gonna call that cast list.svelte in this same source folder, create a new file, cast list. We'll just put in a div. Right now it'll just say cast list. So we'll go back into the app. We can include it and it should bring up the text over here. Let's go ahead and add a container class. And maybe we'll put this on a headline level one for right now. All right, we're gonna want another component. So that's gonna be a search component. Import cast search. It'll be in the same directory. Let's just do another H1 cast search. Call it cast search. All right, so we know how to pass data down to a component. What we need to do is read some data from our file. So to do that, I'll need to import an on mount method from the library. And then I'm gonna use that. And I'll use the fetch API to get some information from my file. I'm going to need to put that in a variable. So I'll create a variable here called cast and initialize it to an empty array. And I'll create another variable to hold the loaded cast list as well. Once I have that, I can pass that along to the component. Let's go to the cast list and we'll need to expose that variable that we passed into this component. And then we'll create some HTML to receive the values. To look through the values, we'll use the each statement and I can destructure the values so that they're received into different variables. And whenever you do an each statement, you need to close it out with a closing version. Now in here, you just put the items that you want to loop through. My images are all in the images folder and they have an extension of underscore tn.svg. And for the alt tag, I can just use the name parameter. I'm also gonna use an H4 tag here to output the name. You can see that all the images as well as the names came in. Let's go ahead and add some styles to make this look a little bit nicer. When we do this image here, I don't have to worry about polluting anything else in the application that is an image tag, since this particular image will be scoped only to this component. Let's just add a gap right here. With some components, we need to not just be able to pass things to them, but we also need them to bubble up events and also pass along any changes to data. Let's take a look at how we do that with this cast search component. Now this is going to have a script just like the other ones, and it's going to expose a variable called search term. Now we'll be receiving this variable, but we also need to be able to modify it. So I'm gonna create a div here, and this div is going to have an input field. Now here, we're going to bind this value called search term. So this is gonna allow us to not just modify the value of this input field, but also have the input field modify the value of the search term. To do that, we're gonna to need to use an on key up event, and this is just gonna feed an arrow function this arrow function is going to use a method called dispatch and it's gonna pass along something called update search to the component at the top. Now in order to use that, we'll need to go ahead and get this and then also create this variable in here. So that's what's gonna allow us to create an element that will send data back into the main component. Let's go ahead and save this. And you can see the box right here. It's not doing very much right now. I can also add a headline. This headline will let me use a conditional statement. I'll say if the search term exists, then what I'll do is I'll add a word called for, and this is how you close out an if statement. Otherwise, I'll put the search term right here. Now we don't really have a search term yet, so that's undefined. We haven't passed it down to this component. But if we type one in here, notice that it does come up over there. So although it's not initialized quite yet, we haven't passed it down from the main component, it's able to tell when the value changes by using this bind attribute. Also, whenever we are typing something into this component, it's sending an event up the chain into the main component. Let's go ahead and capture that. I'll start by creating the search term variable here and I'll initialize it with 
an empty string. Now I need to make sure that I pass that here. And I can see that it's no longer undefined because it has an empty value. If I initialize it with a value, you would see that it would appear not only here, but also in here. Let's go ahead and clear that out again. Now you can see that I can receive the event that I pass along with the dispatch method. So whenever I encounter this update search method that I'm passing back up, then I can execute an arrow function. And here I'm gonna modify the cast list. I'm going to go ahead and run a method called filter that will filter the list of items by the search term. Now I haven't created that yet, so let's go ahead and do that. So this is going to receive a list as well as, I'll call it query here. And we'll just return the list filtered by a variable called item. I'm just gonna search for the name, make sure that I convert whatever a user types to lowercase. And I'm gonna use the JavaScript match method to match it to the query, also convert it to lowercase. All right, let's go ahead and save that. And notice that now my filtering works.